Chief Topper Shutt has been in Ellicott City all day, helping us understand how floods happen in that town and what happened in this one. He's there live tonight looking at some moves the town is making to handle the next flood. And Top, you say this will happen again. I think it's inevitable and you know we're sitting here next to Main Street's right behind me there and the Tiber River below me, but we're sitting in the Patuxent River and also the Patapsco water basin. Uh, and what happens is all the water feeds essentially down through the Main Street area of Ellicott City. This river stream goes right through and meets up with Hudson on the other side of Main Street and then feeds into the Patapsco and when they get full that's what your flash flooding is all about. What have they done to try to change the direction? Well, they have tried to change the direction and control the flow of the river. Okay, this is the Tiber Branch, which runs right through town. Main Street's right there. If you look down, you see sort of a half pipe over the Tiber Branch, and that's to control the flow of the water. But if you look carefully, it's all covered with debris, which means the water came completely out of that. Look at this fence here. This is a new fence. It's gone down there. And see the debris, how it's pressed up against the fence? Well, so let's say the engineers do a great job and they engineer tunnels big enough to take the water flow. Well, it's not going to take the flow when it gets clogged with branches and trees and gravel and rocks. I mean, a gallon of water weighs eight pounds. It's very, very powerful. So now the Tiber branch goes, makes a little turn. If you look carefully, there's the part of this fence, a black fence. And then if you look toward the tunnel, you see a bunch of pile of wood and trees well, that was blocked by cars on Sunday night. So again, even if it's engineered perfectly, will it work with the debris? Probably not. So, so here's the deal with flash floods. This, this is the Tiber right here, and it's, you know, it's running pretty fast, but it's only about a foot deep and only about six feet wide. But during the height of the flood, it was up to that tree about where my spotlight is, and see all the silt and the dirt? Underneath all of that is a five foot seawall that was just built. So these little streams can go from six feet to anywhere to 80 to 100 feet wide and 12 feet deep. So because of the way they're situated in the, t in the topographical area with everything feeding down Main Street, they're gonna try to throw $80 million at it and that might do it in a perfect world, but I think just given their location in this watershed, it will flood again. It is a sobering reality, but one surely they have to take into consideration as they figure out what to do next. All right, Top, thanks so much for that. All right.